Hello, my Bill for Thousand Nation. How's everyone doing today? Hopefully everyone's having a great day. If not, I hope it gets better from here. We are back with another Mr. Nightmare. This one is titled Three Disturbing True Horror Stories. All right. I'm excited to get in today's video. If you guys are excited as I am, please go ahead, turn them lights down low, put on something comfy cup with something special. Let's get creeped the hell out. I love Mr. Nightmare, man. It doesn't get any better. So this happened when I was 20 years old. I'm 22 now, so it's not that long ago. While in college, I was a babysitter during the week for a family, and sometimes I would nanny for this other, wealthier family on the weekends. No. Right. They would go away often on the weekends and leave their two kids, so I would stay at the house for the weekend with the kids. They had a whole dedicated guest bedroom just for me. And the family was oh, super yeah. nice, so it was honestly great while it lasted. It happened in the fall. The leaves were all falling and it was chilly outside. I had gotten to the house Friday, and Friday night went completely fine. I just played with the two kids, who I'll nickname James and Jessica. James was seven, Jessica was five. They were both cute and well behaved. Their bedtimes were 7.30 for Jessica and 8.30 for James. During the day, I'd play with each of them with their toys. The family had two dedicated rooms for their toys, one for Jess, one for James. Jessica loved her dolls and doll houses. I spent a lot of time playing with her. James loved playing his video games, so I'd watch him play. These kids really had everything, and the house was gorgeous. It was a giant property with a big pond in the middle. It had a separate three-car garage, and then a pool with a pool house across the pond, which was also a bar and rec room, with a pool Ooh. table and darts, arcade games, and a giant TV and multiple sofas. This family was so well off and over the top that they even had an intercom that connected from the pool house to the actual house so that if you press a button on the wall in either place, it would ring and then you could talk through it. The pool house also had a giant window that overlooked the pond and had a view of the house. So after the kids went to bed, I was free to do as I pleased for the night. It was great. I wasn't supposed to have friends over though, and that was a rule I respected. I would just FaceTime my friends and watch movies in the pool house to pass the time. Yeah. It was not a bad place to have free time in, I'll tell you that. I started getting hungry, so I walked back across the property to the house, entered the code to let myself in, and went to the kitchen. They had so many snacks and food that I was allowed to help myself to. I grabbed That's the frozen awesome. snack from the freezer and threw it in the microwave. I when love I snacks. Done, I went back across the property. Bro, you must have snacks, bro. That's all I can say. Property to the pool house. I liked hanging out in there more because I could be louder on the phone and have the TV as loud as I want without waking the kids. I was on the couch eating, watching the movie White Chicks, while texting a bunch of my friends. I, love I was that just movie, in the man. middle of telling my friends how great of a gig this was, when the intercom beeper gave me a heart attack. I went to go press the answer button. And I heard Jessica's voice on the other end, saying she's scared because she keeps hearing noises. Usually she'd sleep through the night, so I'd have to go tuck her back in. I set my food down and ran back across the yard to the house. I entered through the door with the code lock again and went to Jess's room. She must have ran straight back to her bed after we got off the intercom, because she was already back in her bed all scared. I went to tickle her and tuck her in, just so she wouldn't be scared anymore. When she felt better, I left her room, shut the door, and walked down the hall back to the kitchen to grab some wine. As I was looking for a wine opener, I heard the ever so lightest crack in the wood floor from another room. I froze and looked in that direction, instinctively waiting for a second sound. I didn't want to start freaking myself out now. Right. I didn't want Jessica saying she's hearing noises to get in my head. Gotcha. I was thinking it was a regular house settling noise. Nope. I admit, I was a little creeped out now but I left the lights and TV on in the pool house, so I had to go back. I went outside, locked the door with the code, and ran across to the pool house. I sat back down on the couch and resumed eating the rest of my food. I didn't end up bringing the wine. I still had white chicks on, though I was mostly just getting distracted on my phone. Then that damn intercom went off again, making me jump in my seat. I hurried to answer it, and when I did, there was silence on the other end. Jessica, I said into the mic. I thought for sure I heard someone breathing, but that's all I could hear. I said both Jessica and James' names at least three times each. 
Now I was actually starting to become terrified. Yeah. I called my friend Kelsey and told her I want her to come here because I'm actually getting really scared. I told her that the little girl I'm watching said that she was hearing noises. And then I heard a noise. And now someone pressed the intercom button but didn't say anything. I felt like I'd call it was the not police, something man. one of the kids would do. I was still on the phone with Kelsey who was telling me to stop being paranoid. But she also sounded drunk. I was looking out the window to the house the whole time I was on the phone with her. The hallway lights turned on. I told Kelsey this, and any ounce of possibility that it was one of the kids disappeared when a large figure stepped into frame at one of the hallway windows. I screamed and dropped oh, the phone shit. as I was looking at a grown man who seemed to see me and he was looking back at me. I realized the intercom was still on this entire time. I picked up my phone, hung up on Kelsey, and called 911. And as I did, I was crying, screaming into the intercom that I'm calling 911 right now, leave us alone. I was basically screaming everything I said Man, to the I police the chills, into the bro. intercom. I went back to the, the window. Chills. He wasn't at the window oh in the house God. anymore. I was hysterical crying, begging the 911 operator to please hurry up. She kept telling me to calm down, asking me a million Didn't questions. Did you calm down? I kept yelling the address and... <laughs> you just need to come down. Bitch, you come down. Don't you dare tell me come down. I will come down there and beat the shit out of you. Get here now. To the phone and saying, please hurry. When she asked, are the kids safe? I screamed, no. No. They're in the house still with that man. And that's when I heard the scream of Jessica through the intercom. And I completely broke down and fell to my knees crying as the 911 operator was still trying to get me to keep it together. But I couldn't. I said I don't know what to do, and she said the police Run are in almost there. there. Shoot that motherfucker in his fucking face. I replied he has the kids, and she asked if I saw if the man had any weapons. I said I couldn't tell, but then I heard Jessica's voice speaking into the intercom, saying my name. I went over and shouted, yes, I'm here. Get your brother and get out of the house. She was crying, saying that there was a man in here. I said, yes, I know. Just get your brother and come outside now. It was the bravest thing I had ever done, running outside back across the yard to the house and meeting the two kids who were already at the door. I grabbed both of them and led them back across the yard to the pool house again, where we hid with the lights off. Both of them were crying, and I still wanted to as well, but I had to be strong and keep it together for them. Yeah. I yep. still was 100%. on the phone with 911, and she eventually told me that the police are here and that they'll come meet us at the pool house. Those words were the most comforting words I'd heard in my life. The flashlights of the police shone through the windows. I led the kids to the door where we met a couple police officers. The female cop took the kids with her to one car. I went with another cop to another car. There were already three cop cars in the front of the house, and more kept showing up. I was answering all the questions I was asked, and then they found him. They brought out a guy who looked to be right around six foot, he looked at everyone as he was brought out in handcuffs and put in the back of a car. I still remember his face as he looked at me. He looked like the product of incest. His face was messed up. Jessica and James' parents were called right away and made aware of the situation. There was no way any of us were staying there that night. The parents arranged for the kid's aunt to come pick them up to stay with her, and I guess she called out of work the next day. I went home after they didn't need me anymore, but when I got home that night... I didn't sleep. I was still in I shock. Imagine I imagine not. I still had a leftover adrenaline rush. The parents understandably didn't leave their kids alone for a long time after that, I'm sure. I do know they pressed charges to the fullest extent, and with their resources, I hope that creep got what he deserved and more. I respectfully told them I couldn't stay there anymore because I was haunted by that night. I could only imagine how scarred those poor kids were, and maybe still are. I'm sure they understand. I'd understand. I'd be like, no, yeah, no, by all means. That's fuck. Just think if she had actually been in the house with the kids and stuff over in the pool house. Like, he could have, like, snuck in there while, like, she could have fell asleep on the couch or something watching TV or been this, like, nose deep in her phone, not hurting behind him, and then dead. Whew. Man. 28 years old, solo camping in a local woodland with my beagle, Reggie only realizing I wasn't as solo as I thought. It was November. The weather was still mildly warm during the day, but at night it would get cold. Yeah. So I came prepared. I brought my portable fire pit, 
lighter That's beautiful fluid, though. A lighter, look at all the look at all that. for chopping wood. Everybody's like, man, why do you like winter and fall so much? Look at all these collars, bro. Look at all these collars. It's so pretty. Mm. I also, of course, brought a tent, a sleeping bag, and my fishing gear so that I could fish at the lake. I brought enough food to last the two days we'd be there, but if I caught some fish, I would plan to eat it. I hiked for my truck about a mile into the forest until I was near enough to the lake. I set up my campsite in a comfortable little opening, and I brought Reggie along with me to the lake to go fishing. I caught a couple smaller fish that weren't really worth trying to cook, so I threw them back in. Reggie kept looking into the forest at something, and his tail would stop wagging as if he locked onto something. It could have been Time any number of little animals that he heard or saw. He's well trained not to go running off though, so I don't keep him on a leash. After maybe an hour of fishing, we went for a hike around the lake. When we were directly across the lake from our campsite, I looked over to the other side and I saw what looked like a couple of people walking into the woods. They were so far away it was hard to tell, but they really did look like people, and they were right around where the campsite was. I didn't want to get robbed, so I told Reggie come on, and we made a quick pace back around the lake. When we got back to the campsite, my tent zipper was open. Someone had gone through it, no doubt. Surprisingly, nothing appeared to be missing, though. Not that there was really much to steal beyond the fire pit and fishing supplies. Still, I knew I was right when I thought I saw people, and the fact that they had gone through my campsite gave me the creeps. Fuck yeah. To be safe, I spent the next hour or so moving my campsite to a different spot a little further up the lake. Then I started chopping some wood to get a fire going in the fire pit. Once that was going, I fed Reggie, and then heated up some chili for dinner. Then we sat by the fire, and I was writing in my journal when Reggie started barking at something in the forest. It was dark now, and I didn't really see anything beyond what the fire lit up. I looked out into the darkness, a little creeped out. On that note, I brought Reggie inside of the tent and went to put out the fire. If there were people out in these woods, I didn't really want to be advertising my location with the fire. Right. I climbed into the sleeping You're gonna bed, be advertising them with, with the smoke, reading though. light next to me, I was reading my novel. Reggie's ears would repeatedly move as he was hearing things that I wasn't hearing. He kept looking around at the tent walls. I kept saying, what is it, boy? He started to growl. He heard something out there. It could have maybe been a deer, it could have maybe been a bear, or it could have been a person. I found the idea of a person being out there still, in the dark, to be more terrifying than a bear. Fuck yeah. Eventually, Reggie calmed down and put his head down. With that, I was uncomfortable and wanted the night to pass. So I turned off my lantern and went to sleep. I woke up hours later to Reggie growling and howling. I told him to be quiet. I listened, and I could hear someone whistling. The kind of whistling you do to a dog to get their attention. Reggie started growling again in response to it. Someone was actually out there at my campsite in the pitch black darkness, and I was scared shitless. The whistling turned to a clicking noise from someone's mouth. Then footsteps started getting closer to the tent until they were right outside the tent, and then they stopped. Can I fucking Reggie help you? was going ballistic howling, and I Fuck grabbed that shit, him and bro. got him to no. be quiet without saying anything. Without the crackling of the fire, there was total silence apart from the wind. Reggie started growling again, looking in the direction of the zipper of the tent. Silence, until finally, another whistle from right outside the tent door. Reggie went ballistic again. I tried to fake a really deep, commanding voice and yelled, You better get out of here, I have a gun. But my voice just came out shaky and scared sounding. The footsteps walked away from the tent at a slow, heavy pace until they faded away completely. That or they simply stopped in their tracks not far from the tent because Reggie kept growling on and off for like an hour after that. I couldn't sleep after that, but I was too terrified to leave the tent and pack up everything in the dark. My phone had no service in the middle of the forest, so it's not like I could even call a family member or friend to tell them about what's going on. And then, out in the distance, there was a woman's scream that probably echoed for miles. It sounded like a woman literally screaming for her life. This was the final straw. I grabbed Reggie, put on my boots, grabbed my flashlight, and ran. I ran the way I came all the way until I got to my truck. I still had no cell reception. I slept in my truck that night. And at dawn, I went back into the woods with Reggie back to the campsite. I collected all my things and disassembled my tent. I didn't even pay attention to if my things were gone through again. 
I was just in a rush to get out of there. Half an hour later, I had the truck loaded up and I was out of there. As soon as I had reception, I called this non-emergency police number that I found online to report yeah. a woman's scream and suspicious people around my campsite the night before. I don't know what became of any of that, and I don't know what was going on in those woods, but I never returned to go camping there again. Fuck no. Fuck that place. <laughs> Mr. Battle Rabbit? That's an interesting name. I like it. I was home alone one night. Our house is a split-level house, and the upstairs is an apartment, basically. So my brother and I live upstairs while our parents live downstairs. It's pretty nice. It was a weekend, and I was staying in. It was rainy outside, so my friends didn't really want to do anything. I spent the night watching scary movies in my room. I was watching Doctor Sleep, a movie I'd never seen before. I was pretty invested in it. I it while I went to go grab a snack in the kitchen. I went to the pantry. Tree closet. Okay, it wasn't bad, but nah. Grabbed a box of crackers, and then heard a sound from downstairs, which I dismissed as nothing. I went back to my room, shut the door, and turned the movie back on. I noticed the backyard motion light was now on, and then I heard some sounds from downstairs, directly below my bedroom. It sounded like the back door being closed. So to explain the layout of our house, my room is directly above the back door to the house on my parents' floor. The walls in this house are paper thin, you could hear a pin drop from downstairs. So I easily heard someone downstairs, and when I paused the movie, it became more obvious that I was hearing footsteps. I texted my family group chat asking who just got home. My mom answered within a minute saying, we're not home. That would mean it would have to be my brother, but that would be incredibly weird since he never enters through the back of the house. He also wasn't supposed to be home tonight. I said in our group chat, I hear someone downstairs. Alex, is that you? He didn't reply. I heard the footsteps crossing the house towards the front until they were out of earshot. Then, I heard footsteps coming up the stairs. I turned off the TV. The footsteps were coming straight down the hall to my room, skipping every other room in the hallway. They were heavy footsteps. They got to my door, and then my door opened. I was laying still in my bed, pretending to have my eyes shut, squinting just enough to see a head peering into the room through the doorway, looking right at me. It was dark. I could only see the person's Fuck eyes. That. And it didn't look like Alex. He stood at the doorway, watching for what felt like forever as I laid there pretending to be asleep. After maybe 30 seconds to a minute, he closed the door, but I didn't hear footsteps walk away. I texted my family group chat in all capitals, Alex, please tell me that's you in the house. He replied back almost instantly, saying, no, what are you talking about? That was when I told them someone is in the house. I called 911 and started whispering into the phone. That was when I finally heard footsteps walk away from the door. He must have heard me start to speak, even in a whisper. The footsteps went down the stairs, and then I couldn't hear them anymore. I was told to stay on the line with the dispatcher until help arrived. There was a knock at the door downstairs about five minutes later, so when the dispatcher told me I was good to go down to let the police in, I did. In my county, police work in pairs, so the two police officers who arrived looked through the whole house with me, checking every closet under every bed. And when it was determined that the house was clear, they left. One of my parents left the back door unlocked. It was as simple as that. There's no chance of sleeping after something like this happens. Right. Nobody would be home until the next day, so I had to get through this night alone. A little while after the police left, the backyard motion light turned on. Something set it off. I looked out my window and caught just a glimpse of a man walking away from the house into a far dark corner of the backyard where I couldn't see him anymore. I think he may have tried entering the house again, but this time the door was locked. I watched through the window for as long as the motion light was on. When it turned off, it was too dark to see anything out there. Fuck that, man. As long as the light didn't go off again, then I'd know he wasn't coming back. Thankfully, he never did. Taking half a second to lock your doors can be the difference between someone getting in your house or not. Because my parents forgot to lock the door, Shut I will now lock forever windows have and a doors, bro. image of seeing that person's head peering into my room looking Rest at your me, life. specifically the eyes. It's an image that's going to stay with me. Oh yeah, most definitely. Woo, Mr. Nightmare coming in fucking clutch, bro. Bobby Big Dick in it. Gotta love it.
Oh, I love Mr. Nightmare's videos, man. Ooh, they always creepy as fuck. Oh my lord, that would be so traumatic being there and this dude just be like, no, fuck that, bro. Ooh, give me the heebie-jeebies. All right, really enjoyed today's video. If you all enjoyed today's video as much as I did, please go down there, leave a thumbs up. It really does help the channel grow. While you're down there, if you want, go on over and slap that subscribe button. Become part of the Belfast Thousand Nation. We do some crazy stuff here. If you want to know when that crazy stuff happens, ding that bell and turn on all notifications. And if you would like, for about an hour after each video, I keep an eye on Discord for anyone who wants to shoot the shit for a little bit. I'm, a, I'm, I'm always available for about an hour after the video, and then I got to start getting ready for bed and all that good stuff. All right. If y'all enjoyed today's video as much as I did, don't forget. Leave that like. As always, be good to one another. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye. Leave that.